All right, I'm going to call to order the administrative matters meeting of the Larimer County Board of Commissioners. Today is Tuesday, October 15th, 2019. I am Tom Donnelly. I am the chairman of the Board of Commissioners this year. I'm joined by John Cafalis, Commissioner from District 1, Steve Johnson, Commissioner from District 2. Uh, our County Manager, Linda Hoffman, is here at the controls. Uh, Stephanie Grosskopf from the Larimer County Court and Recorder's Office is here to keep the minutes of this proceeding. And Alicia Jeffers from the Commissioner's Office is also here to time the public comment portion of our meeting. Um, looking around the room, it's almost like going back in time. Um, uh, so I, perhaps ironically, today is actually the 10th anniversary, I believe, of the Balloon Boy incident in Larimer <laughs> County. Frank, yeah, this is, so you know, you're, you're, uh, you're here um, in, uh, in, uh, on a great anniversary of Larimer County for of a notable event. Things haven't gotten much better. Yeah, it's the tradition of this Board of Commissioners to begin this meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. So I'd ask you all to stand and join us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, everyone, thank you for that. Um, first item of business this morning is public comment. We have uh, three folks who have signed up. Uh, the first is Rick Casey. Rick? Hi, welcome. We only made two more copies. Slide hard. Yeah, you slide harder than that. No. Maybe I'll just, I'll just hand them to the manager. Man, <laughs> the old fashioned way. Welcome, sir. Good morning, Commissioners. I'm Rick Casey. I live at 1636 Large Street, and I'm speaking on behalf of the Larimer Alliance. I'm grateful for the opportunity to address this board once again. Last time I was was here it was on September 3rd and I addressed you about the Halliburton loophole and left some information. I hope you're able to look at it and reflect on it. Last night the Larimer Alliance hosted its second public forum. It took place at the Senior Center. The forum focused on health, safety, and most importantly air quality monitoring. I was glad to see that Commissioner Kafalis was there. The panelists featured Dr. Detlev Helming, an atmospheric scientist at the Institute for Arctic and Alpine Research at the University of Colorado Boulder. Dr. Corey Correll, a local MD, and Marcia Martin, who is on the Longmont City Council. They all spoke to the issue of the health effects of oil and gas operations, the evidence for this in the Front Range, and what is being done by citizens' actions in Boulder and Longmont. What they discussed is highly relevant to the issue of the implementation of SB 181 here in Larimer County. Boulder County hired Dr. Helming to build a continuous real-time air quality monitoring station at the Boulder Reservoir which has been in operation since February 2017, and it reports its data on methane and other VOCs in real time on an NSTAR website. It is the most sophisticated air monitoring station in the state and is unique in its ability to detect the difference in ozone created by cars and the ozone created by fracking. This station and the data has been extremely interesting. Did you know that the Boulder Reservoir ranks as one of the worst sites for pentane, which is one of the primary VOCs and a prime fingerprint for oil and gas in the nation, ahead of Los Angeles and any place in Texas. This was shocking to me and I thank everyone else at the meeting. Another even more relevant item came from Ms. Martin. Longmont decided to construct their own air quality monitoring stations and are working with the CDPHE and Dr. Helming to construct them. There will be two such stations so that they can give, get authoritative data from the air pollution wafting over their area from Weld County. It will be coming online sometime soon. Larimer County should build such a pair of air monitoring stations due to our proximity to Weld County. The cost should not be a barrier. The primary measuring instrument, a gas chromatograph, costs about $50,000. Fort Collins has two such monitoring stations already, but they only measure ozone, not the uh, VOCs, and they're not strategically located as they should be. If you'd like more authoritative information about the effects of oil and gas, I refer you to the study that Dr. Correll mentioned. On another note, I have a message from one of our members that why aren't these meetings being televised on FCTV 14 so that other people could participate who have to go to work. On another note, I have made a request for a missing formal response to our letter 
that's not on the website, and I my request has been ignored. I hope that could be fixed sometime soon. Okay. We'll uh, see please what's see going the on. references in the handout for more information. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Can you check about the response that um, Mr. Casey speaking of, speaking of? We have your phone number too, so we can get back to you. Uh, Deb Bjork. Hi. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Rick already informed you about our forum last night. It was a great success. The room was packed. Mm -hmm. um, we had sent personal invitations to all the elected leaders in the county and city, as well as county staff um, involved in writing oil and gas regulations. And I thank you to Leslie for attending. Appreciate it. And John Cavallis. Appreciate it. Um, I looked for each of you county commissioners there and Matt Lafferty, and I don't know if I missed you, but I didn't see you there. If you weren't at the sixth grade Walt Clark um, uh, choir concert, you didn't see me. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't see you there, though. No, I wasn't there. <laughs> they and sang We Are the World, though. Well, you would have liked it. It would have, it would have been nice. I'm sure you have other commitments as well, I understand. And there's many things that you're either personal or uh, requested to attend. It's just very concerning to me because I think it's probably the most important thing in front of the county right now. Um, since you're going to put these um, recommendations from the task force into 20-year land use code, I can't imagine anything more important as this is going to affect the health of our county and our residents for decades to come. Um, I, I would ask you, it will be on our Larimer County or LarimerAlliance.org website soon, and I would ask you to uh, watch the video there. Um, I also have an article that I'll hand out, and it's an article that was published in August um, showing that ground level ozone is similar to smoking a pack of cigarettes a day. So inter even intermittent exposure, which we have here, is similar. I have five grandchildren. I know you have children and grandchildren. My twin four-year-old grandchildren are smoking a pack of cigarettes a day living in Fort Collins. This is, no, this is no small thing. And so while I realize that you have other things that are important for you to attend to, I can't imagine anything more important than this. The health consequences over the years are going to be staggering for our county, as well as the rest of northern Colorado and the Front Range. In this article, they talk about, they did a study in which they looked at 7,000 adults living in various cities. Um, all of those cities have lower um, surface ozone level than we do in Fort Collins. So we don't have to take this with a grain of salt. Ours are much higher than that. Um, and they looked at um, people over 10 years and looked at re their respiratory problems over those 10 years, and they were significant. Uh, Detlev Helmig last night, Dr. Helmig, um, talked about the cost by 2025 in terms of deaths in uh, northern Colorado due to surface ozone. Um, it's a staggering problem with many, uh, obviously many um, uh, factors putting, going into it, but as I gave you the last time I was here, the form from the COGCC, the oil and gas um, surface ozone pollutants are growing. They've almost doubled. And that was the, the handout I gave you last year from the COG, or last time from COGCC. Thank you. Thank you, Deb. Uh, Eric Sutherland. Good morning, Eric. Good morning. Eric Sutherland, citizen of Larimer County. No fifth graders with me uh, today. School's in session, so I'm sure my comments will be discounted as they usually are. Uh, when we get to uh, spring break or summer break, I'll be sure to bring some in. Tiny houses, right? <laughs> um, I mean, John, you, you want to lecture people about respect, and yet you disrespect people every single moment that you take, that you allow corruption and lawlessness to enter our public finance system in this county. Now, to begin with, I have here the Tabor notice for a 2019 election. And in those circumstances where no comments were filed uh, for or against a ballot question, the county clerk has included a statement, no comments were filed by the constitutional deadline. I filed comments by the constitutional deadline, not by the statutory deadline. 
and those comments were ignored on advice of your county attorneys. That is grounds for overturning the election, you guys. You must substantially comply with the Colorado Constitution to get voter approval for a tax increase. I think uh, the county attorneys, like everybody else, is assuming that Larimer 1A is going to fail miserably, as it should. Um, second issue here is this evening, City of Fort Collins will be considering the uh, budget for the DDA as required by statute to adopt. Question is, Commissioner Kafalis, if Larimer 4A, which is the tax increase to better fund teacher salaries put on the ballot by Poudre School District, passes, will that additional money that accrues to the DDA be retained by the DDA and spent by the DDA? How is it that we're having elections where the subdivision of state government that requests voter approval for a tax increase ends up with a tax increase for another subdivision of government, City of Fort Collins. How does that happen? Well, for one thing, it shouldn't be happening. The uh, statutes only allow for that mechanism that backfills the DDA, 39.5128, in terms of urban renewal authorities, not DDAs. I'll send you the book here so you can study the statute yourself. So this shouldn't be happening, and yet it will. And so, you know, how does how does this work, guys? How are we selling our students, teachers, taxpayers who support them down the creek over and over again to finance eight million dollars a year for the downtown development authority? Can you really justify that as a board member of the DDA? Can you really justify that level of expenditure, considering other pressing needs, considering that uh, teachers in our D district don't have a living wage. Thank you, Eric. Okay. Is there anyone else in attendance who would like to make public comment? Yes. Come on up. Give us your name, ma'am. Give us your comments, please. Welcome. Welcome. Good morning, gentlemen. Um, I don't usually give my name because I'm protected under the address confidential. That's, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. But I do go by Chris. Okay. Okay. Uh, first of all, I wanted to thank the board, John Kafalis, thank you, for uh, getting a meeting together with the Walker, which has not yet occurred. But I was serious about the fact that it was the last time. Um, I have been blacklisted. I didn't even know what that term was until I had talked to a public defender in another county. And it's been going on in Larimer County for people that have disabilities. Um, these letters that go out, when you have people that are difficult or have these disabilities that cannot communicate effectively or efficiently when their disability kicks in, um, are blacklisted. They're not allowed to contact the county. They're not allowed to call. They're not allowed to have somebody contact them. Um, there's no emails that they can even contact. So this blacklisting that's gone on has been now been reported to the Attorney General of the State of the United States and also to the State of Colorado and a complaint form that is really, in my opinion, beneath Larimer County quality, which I have seen years and years and years where you are supposed to be helping the disabled, the elderly, those that have disabilities, and yet you have the lack of training and staff to be able to deal with people that have PTSD, have these other uh, health uh, issues or dis uh, disabling conditions. So I wanted to thank you for the meeting. It's a little late, um, and I'm sorry, but the, the um, because it has become now uh, something that's going to be investigated, in this county, we need to understand that it is necessary that um, there be training in your Department of Human Services to understand and develop means for people that have disabilities to have a voice in your government um, in regards to what's going on. And I know that it's hard um, to make time, or they, uh, you know, you get kind all kinds of excuses when you talk to people. Well, I have another meeting I have to go to, and you know, if I'm p taking the time and energy and effort out of my day to talk to somebody, by darn, you need to take the same amount of time, no matter how long it takes. You know, giving birth to a baby, it's a long process, but unfortunately, it's labor intensive, 
And that's the same thing that we're trying to do here, is to provide equality for people with disabilities and elderly in this county, and it's labor intensive. And yeah. I would appreciate and let you know that I do appreciate your efforts, but it took a long time to get anybody to respond from the Department of Human Services. In regards to this, there's still an audit out there in the food stamp division that I'm not sure if the state did or if the federal government did. But I need to find out what the, because that person was auditing when they put my daughter in and lumped her in with my situation where the county was the one that, mm -hmm. that aired in, in charging me $638. Okay. Um, so I need to find out if you can help me with that. I'd appreciate it because I still haven't seen any results from that audit. And I'm kind of curious to see how it was spun. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chris. All right. Is there anyone else in attendance who would like to make public comment at this time? The room is full. No? All right. Great. Well, thanks, everybody, for coming down. Uh, we're going to uh, move on to approval of the minutes for the week of October 7, 2019. Commissioner Kafalas. Oh. Can I give you these articles? Yeah, absolutely. You can give them to Alicia, too, and she can give them to us. Very good. Thank you, Deb. Thank uh, you. Commissioner. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. I move to approve the minutes for the week of October 7, 2019. Very good. We have a motion. All those in favor, signify with an aye. 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 That motion is passed 3 0. Brenda Jemison is here to review the schedule for the week of October 21st, 2019. Hi, Brenda. Good morning, Commissioners. <laughs> On Monday, October 21st at 12 p.m., Commissioner Kafalis will attend the Fire Operations 101 orientation. That's at the Pewter Fire Authority Training Center in Fort Collins. At 1.30 p.m., you have a work session with Lori Cadridge, Interim Director of Community Planning, Infrastructure, and Resources. At 3 p.m., you have the land use items with the development review team in the hearing room on the first floor. On Tuesday, October 22nd, 9 a.m., you have administrative matters. That's this meeting here in this room. At 1.30 p.m., you have administrative direction to the county management in the Sprague Lake Conference Room on the second floor. On Wednesday, October 23rd at 7 a.m., C Commissioner Kafalas may attend the Fort Collins Business Association meeting at the Rocky Mountain Innisfere on Vine Drive in Fort Collins. 1.30 p.m., you have a work session regarding the 2019 through 2023 strategic plan. At 5 p.m., you have the Boards and Commissions reception at the Budweiser Event Center at the Ranch in Loveland. At 7 p.m., Commissioner Donnelly may attend the Fair Board meeting at the McKee 4 H Youth and Community Building in Loveland. On Thursday, October 24th at 12 p.m., Commissioner Kafalas will host a community conversation at the Red Feather Lakes Community Library. The featured guests will be members of the Larimer County's Broadband Steering Committee who will give updates on the broadband connectivity. At 1.30 p.m., Commissioner Kafalas may attend the Red Feather Lakes Planning Advisory Committee meeting in Red Feather Lakes. At 3 p.m., Commissioner Johnson will attend the Fort Collins Urban Renewal Authority meeting at the City of Fort Collins in Fort Collins. At 5 p.m., Commissioner Donnelly may attend the Open Lands Advisory Board meeting at the Larimer County Loveland Campus in Loveland. On Friday, October 25th, at 12 p.m., Commissioner Kafalas will participate in the Downtown Fort Collins Club presentation at Shepherdson Hall at the First Presbyterian Church in Fort Collins. That would be all for the week. Very good. Um, any comments or questions for Brenda? No? Thank you, Brenda. Thank you. Very good. Move on to the consent agenda today. Um, consent agenda consists of two deeds, uh, one policy with regards to family and medical leave, um, five resolutions for land use, eight miscellaneous items, primarily uh, board appointments, and one liquor license issuance, Archer's Poudre River Resort in Bellevue. Would either of my colleagues like to remove any of these items from the consent agenda? No, I would not. Commissioner Claus? No, Mr. Chair. Commissioner Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move approval of the consent agenda for October 15, 2019. Very good. We have a motion. All those in favor signify with an aye. 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 That motion has passed 3 0. Uh, do either of my colleagues have a guest this morning? I do not. No? Okay. Then we'll move on. The first actual business item today is a proclamation declaring October 18, 2019 is Frank Lancaster Day here in, in Larimer County. Uh, Frank, I see you're here. You didn't seem, you didn't, I wonder if you're, were you missing it? Have you been missing it yet? Did this bring back the old memories? Oh, yeah. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Come on up. <laughs> and also, I, yeah. yeah. Said anything, yeah. Yeah. Yay! And, com and Commissioner Cathay Reynolds is here. Cathay, you want to come up too? Yeah. These guys are, yeah. They were always kind of a, a tag team anyway. So, so uh, yeah. 
Does yeah. Bring back memories, does he miss it? Yeah, yeah, no, that's right. <laughs> yeah. It definitely brings back memories. <laughs> yeah. Probably have PTSD, different answers, too. Speaking of PTSD, mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, so Frank Lancaster uh, has very recently retired as the, uh, as the uh, Estes Park Town Manager. Uh, everyone here knows Frank um, began his career here in, in local government at Larimer County in, in 1981. He was a, uh, the, for, like the manager of the Larimer County Landfill. Yeah, after that. First, I was the county forester. Oh, the, oh okay. So he's had a number of roles. And, he, uh, and then in 1983 or 1984, we're not sure, uh, you probably know, he was a, uh, appointed county manager and served in that role until 2012. In 90. Well, I don't think it was. Oh, well, the might be wrong. We don't think so. We think it was earlier than that. It felt like it. But <laughs> and, uh, in 80, 83 is when I became natural resource director. That's when I took on solid waste. Oh wow! We're and saying that for about ten years, and then uh, took on the position of county manager in, in 1990. Yeah, and so served in that role for 22 years, and something like that. Yeah, yeah a long time. It was a long time. And it was a good time. And, good time. and so and Dave Lentz is here. Dave was here when I started with the county. <laughs> we worked together um, in forestry back in '81. Yeah, well, there's a lot of, uh, you look around the room and there's a lot of the folks who, uh, it is like, I was weird, Steve and I were joking in the back, it was like a, a time warp back to 2009 for us uh, to see all the old uh, old faces. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, old faces. old faces. That's it, I was lamenting, why God, why does this have to happen to me? I don't have to get old. But, uh, but you you did um, a tr tremendous amount of, of very positive things for Larimer County, and I, and I, and, and a lot of that's going to be um, uh, communicated in our proclamation. But I think one thing that was really astounding to me when I first came into office was the fact that um, th there were so many people here who had worked so long and really dedicated their entire careers to work here at in the county government. And, and uh, I think that that's attributable to you, Frank, because you made this uh, a really positive place to work. You empowered the people who worked here to, to do their jobs and and it was work worth doing and and obviously they they understood that and they saw that commitment in you and they wanted to respond by um, by uh, in, in equal measure with their own work and I think the thing that's funny is we as I've heard some stories from Neil and Neil's here somewhere on or is oh yeah always lurking behind me you can believe um, about half of those I know yeah you only can believe half of them Good ones. Uh, you, yeah well you can only believe 25 percent of the positive ones the uh, 50 percent of the negative but um, but you know the thing that was really astounding is when when you guys came in to roll um, the county didn't own a single computer I mean it was uh, everything was paper and pencil and and all the and records were all kept in, in file cabinets and and you really did a, um, a a tremendous amount of work modernizing the county and I think we take it for granted now but it wasn't it wasn't necessarily um, always obvious that it was going to go in the direction it went and so um, when we look at the really I mean you we listen to public comment and people you know always come in and talk about what they what their perceived issues are but the reality is is this this government is very well run. It's it's um, it's very efficient. It's very modern. It provides great service to the people, and that um, that's in large part because of you and the rest of the folks actually who are he who are here today. And so um, that's not forgotten here in these halls, and, and nor should it ever be forgotten. And so it's easy for it was the old saying is that it's it's easy to to uh, to see. Um, a long ways because if you stand on the shoulders of giants and so we've I mean we've really benefited from your work and the work of all the folks who've come before us and so uh, that's part of the reason why we're all here and so uh, do any of my colleagues want to say anything you want to say anything? sure I've gotten more concise as time has mm -hmm. gone on and Tom has gotten more verbose verbose there you go. that's you the nice read? way to put it so um, I agree with everything um, Tom said and Frank set a very high standard for ethics and professionalism in the organization and uh, I, I learned a great deal from you Frank and and the other folks in the room and um, local government has more effect on people's lives than any other level of government and the county does a tremendous amount of good and that has been a very rewarding experience for me and largely because of the people that have come before us I was just talking with somebody uh, last week uh, that when you came from Estes Park, when you came to Estes Park, the skills that you brought 
to that town during the disasters that they faced were so welcomed and appreciated and they were expressing how grateful they were to have you came just at the right time for Estes Park to really help them rebuild from some some severe severe death disasters but it's 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 great to see you and proclaim October 18th as Frank Lancaster Day. Do we get the day off for yeah. that? Yeah. Okay, good. Good. Can we have her? Yeah. So, Commissioner Reynolds, do you anything you want to add? No, no. No, I <laughs> we know that. You knew that. It's going to take us to Jay's after this. Uh, we'll get that's right. Coffee well, at Jay's. Everybody to Jay's. <laughs> the, the private resort. Um, I want to reiterate what everybody said. Do you need something? No, no the We're assessor just, just I didn't even realize he was here. I didn't here. realize Bob was I here. I introduced him, but okay. I didn't even realize he was here. Um, when I first came, uh, one of the things that, that I remember highly is that um, people in Larimer County said, if you can't get a job anywhere else, you can go work at the county. Wow. And one of my first conversations with Frank is, I think it would be wonderful if people said, let's get a job at the county. Mm -hmm. And when Frank left, um, it was one of the number one places, and we were getting applications from all over the United States. I think that shows in what's happened. I think it shows in our growth. It shows in the quality of, of the landfill now that Frank started with. It starts in the quality of the ranch. And if you, if you really think doing this is hard, you want to find out what it's like to manage. I served five boards. How many boards did you serve? Hmm. I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> More than five. Well, five. <laughs> when you look at that and you keep a steady roll when you have people coming in that have different opinions every two years, that shows consistency, but it also shows trust. And I think, Steve, you're right. Trust and integrity go a long way if they know that Frank has your back, he's calm, and he's steady, and I think that's why Lermer County is what it is. So um, I agree. This is one of the best forms of government around. And you've had one of the best county managers you'll ever see. Commissioner Kvals, uh, comments, and then I'd look for a motion to move the proclamation. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. And I just want to say thank you, Frank, for your uh, many years of public service leadership. Uh, uh, back in the day, I worked for the county from 1987 to 1994 although we were down on South Mason back then it was called Larimer County Employment and Training Services and I think that um, where the county is today a lot of that is because of the hard work of the folks on the other side of the table uh, getting us to a place where we are a model for uh, how to deliver services how to listen to people how to provide good customer service I think your leadership your, your public service intelligent compassionate and very effective so thank you for that and certainly thank you Commissioner Reynolds Cafe. Uh, you want me to read it now or do the motion? Sure, Commissioner. Oh, would you like to make some comments, Manager? Do you mind? I'll be very brief. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, there's nothing like a successor to see what was left behind. And um, <laughs> <laughs> Can we move on? <laughs> the bodies are buried. <laughs> and I will say that so much of the work that you did uh, toward developing policy, toward building a strong organization, to all the things that others have talked about, are still leveraged across the state today. One of the, uh, the, the body of policy work that you put in place is still a major resource for the Association of Colorado County Administrators. And I always call it ACA because uh, Frank, I think, was in role as uh, the president of the the organization when it was known as the Colorado County. Uh, um, Colorado Col Associated of County Administrators, CACA. CACA. <laughs> so, <laughs> so one of Frank's major contributions to the state changing was the changing CACA to ACA. <laughs> and the sad news is the people who don't know that history now call it ACA. So I like ACA better because I know the history of CACA. So thank you for that. Um, I will also say that you know, when I came in to roll, it is a huge job and a little daunting. And I used to joke with people something that could not have been more true. If you want to take over a, a job that you're, you're not confident you have fully prepared for, just follow Frank, Frank Lancaster because he's going to leave behind a solid organization with all the wheels uh, on the bus going firmly ahead and 
Uh, so I thank you for that, and the organization will will benefit for years and generations to come from your work in setting that foundation. So no, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, well said. And I, I was going to mention just real briefly, we have a, a lot of folks from uh, the commissioner's office from days of yore, and uh, you know Neil and Bob and Denny and Donna and 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 I, I just wondered if anybody, if any of you. All, Bob Keister, yeah. If anybody wanted to say say anything or make any comments, we'd be certainly welcome to have you. We don't join see us you very that. often. We're honored to have you. Keister, I'm worried about that look in your eye. <laughs> <laughs> very good. <laughs> okay. Uh, Commissioner Kefalos. Uh Thanks, Mr. Chair. I'm going to read the proclamation, then I'll make the motion. Uh, yeah, very good. Proclamation, Frank Lancaster Day, October 18th, 2019. Whereas Frank Lancaster dedicated his career to public service, working to make Larimer County a better place to live, raise a family, and enhance the quality of life. First hired by Larimer County on June 27, 1981. Then promoted to Larimer County manager on October 18, 1994. We'll make that correction. And later as town administrator of the town of Estes Park. And whereas Frank Lancaster changed the culture of Larimer County as a place to work, respecting and supporting the professionalism and expertise of all employees in Larimer County, and whereas Frank Lancaster continuously worked toward making Larimer County a visible, viable, and significant local government organization that continues to deliver outstanding public services for residents, which contribute to making Larimer County a desirable place to live, and whereas, there are a few more whereases here, Frank, Frank Lancaster oversaw, this is interesting, the largest public facility improvement projects in the history of Larimer County with the construction of the fairgrounds at the ranch, the Larimer County Justice Center, the Larimer County Courthouse Offices Building, the Larimer County Jail Administration Building, and partnering with the City of Fort Collins on constructing the Mason Street Parking Garage, all of which required voter approval. and. Whereas Frank Lancaster began and organized criminal justice services to efficiently coordinate services and agencies within the criminal justice system and build the Larimer County Community Corrections and alternative sentencing facilities, which prepared the community for Larimer County's voter approved next steps to fill the service gaps in behavioral health. And whereas Frank Lancaster initiated a five-year strategic plan in 2004 to wisely use taxpayer funds and accomplish realistic, measurable goals for Larimer County and improve the many ways it serves residents while encouraging all Larimer County departments to use best practices when delivering services to the public. And whereas Frank Lancaster initiated transparent budget and public outreach processes to achieve short-term objectives and make steady progress towards long-term goals. And whereas, getting down to the wire there, Frank, whereas Frank Lancaster championed a first ever model of joint planning between the town of Estes Park uh, and Larimer County planning. Uh, thank you for that, yeah. Frank. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, I'm, I'm editorializing here. I shouldn't be. Uh, whereas, here we go. Whereas October 18th, 2019 marks the, the 25th anniversary of Frank Lancaster's promotion to Larimer County Manager. Now, we'll, we'll work on the, uh, on the details. Now, therefore, we, the Board of Larimer County Commissioners, do hereby proclaim October 18th, 2019 as Frank Lancaster Day in Larimer County, dated this 15th of October 2019, a Board of Commissioners of Larimer County, Tom Donnelly Chair. Congratulations. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I move to proclaim October 18th, 2019, Frank Lancaster Day in Larimer County. Woo -hoo. Very good. We have a motion, and um, we'll, we'll vote, and then Frank will give you an opportunity to say anything if you might want to say. Uh, we have a motion. All those in favor signify with an aye. 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 Emphatically, yes. 
And so uh, the motion is approved. October 18th, 2019 is proclaimed Frank Lancaster Day here in Larimer County. So, Frank, anything you want to say? Yeah, congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's only three shopping days left, so you better hurry. <laughs> Well, thank you. I am I'm overwhelmed by all this, and um, you really read that list of stuff. I've forgotten we've done some of that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> we did a lot of the county, um, you know, a lot of changes when when Neil and I came on board, and it was, definitely was a team effort. Um, if there's anything that I, I think that I did well and I'm proud of, it was hiring the right people and getting them in the right seats, and to see people um, in this room that that I hired and got in here, and and um, then basically hired people smarter than me and got out of their way, let them do their job. That was always kind of my uh, mantra as far as a manager. And, um, you know, see Linda take over and do a great job. And um, the whole team that, that put everything together moving forward is what, what made things happen. Um, and it was great to be able to serve Estes Park, to be able to do something different. Uh, I love county government. Um, I never got over that. You know how many times I was supposed to say trustees and I said commissioner. It just kind of <laughs> flew out. Remind them. Uh, and I had to remind myself who I work for. Um, <laughs> any just, ideas, though. Yeah, uh, <laughs> streams, I'm sure. It took a long time. Um, but it's been a great opportunity. I really appreciate the opportunity that the elected officials gave me, particularly the board that took a chance on hiring me. Um, it was pretty out there to hire somebody who was a uh, – an MBA with a forest with a horticulture degree is not the normal thing you do in public service, but they took the chance, and I appreciate that. And it's been a great run, great career, um, great community. I think Larimer County is respected throughout uh, the state uh, for the for its programs and for its operations and for its staff, and very proud of that. And I think uh, it's been great to have the opportunity. And I thank you very much, and I really am honored by this. Um, a little choked up, but it's um, it's really nice. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're a very humble guy. I need, I need to thank my wife, Jill. Yeah, there you for go. For the support of things. There you go. Um, Yay. Could not have done that without her yeah. support. Thank you. Jill Lancaster Day is the 17th, by the way. So there you go. <laughs> every other day. Every, yeah, yeah. Every other day. Yeah, he gets yeah, one day, you get 364. Every other day, yeah. Yeah, yeah you get 364. <laughs> Maybe yeah. I can get out of some stuff on Friday. <laughs> yeah, no honeydew <laughs> list that day. Well, you're you're far too humble, and and if I've seen anything, it's that that the day to day details can really overwhelm your your time, right? And they can take away your ability to accomplish almost anything else other than just staying afloat that very day. And so, you know, you look at this as a, I mean, it's it's hardly all encompassing, but just to look at at some of your numerous accomplishments, it's amazing that you're able to achieve so much. You know, still doing the day-to-day -day stuff but really looking long-term and, and achieving a lot of like long-term goals for the county that really have contributed significantly to the betterment of the services provided to the people of this county so wonderful work um we'd like to take a photo with you if we could i would love that you'd be amenable to that you dressed up so um <laughs> the board's gonna take yeah i know for him it is dressed up it is we're gonna take a um a, a t couple minute recess here and we're gonna go out and take some photos so i'd like to ask all of the um, Frank supporters to come out with us, and, and Linda, and, and Cathay, obviously, and, and, uh, and we're going to take a few different uh, photos. So we're going to be recessed for just a couple minutes.
Okay, the board's going to come back to order. Uh, we're going to have an update uh, from Lori Cadridge, our Interim Director of Community Planning, Infrastructure, and Resources, and some other folks, including our County Forester, Dave Lenz, about uh, Emerald Ash Borer. So would you like to begin? Good morning, Commissioners. I am going to turn this quickly over to Dalen. Right, well, Dalen, why don't you introduce yourself for people who might be listening in online? Good morning. I'm Dalen Figs. I'm the Director for Natural Resources for Larimer County. Uh, and with me today is Megan Flanagan and Dave Lentz, also with Natural Resources, and they'll introduce themselves here in just a minute. But as you were, um, em Emerald Ash Borer recently arrived in Larimer County uh, near the town of Berthoud. And Megan and David are really here today to talk about a couple of items. One is um, really provide some background information on EAB and what it is and why it's a concern. Also to really go over some of the mitigation a aspects of the county, what we've worked on in the past years to prepare for the arrival of this species. And then last, really the, the future strategies uh, to manage the species now that it's here in the county. And some information was handed out earlier. We're certainly here to answer any questions you may have. But with that, I'll turn it over to, to Megan and, and Dave for uh, some information exchange. OK. okay. Um, first slide is uh, where Emerald Ash Borer is right now. Uh, that was update, updated October 1st, I believe. Um, first started in Michigan. Now it's in uh, 35 states, five Canadian provinces. Um, go ahead. Mm -hmm. This is the Emerald Ash Borer, and I actually just wanted to throw that in there oh. uh, on, on the penny, just give you a little perspective of the actual size. And again, the beetle, um, wow. it's a good looking bug. They're pretty, yeah, yeah I was going to say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, yeah. And that is the, the old ash bore and the distinctive D-shaped exit holes that you probably read about and you'll probably read oh, about D a lot in, in the future. Uh, D-shaped, it's a flat-headed bore, uh, thus one that exits the tree, uh, the exit holes are D-shaped. And those are the galleries underneath the... Uh, bark of a tree and that's actually what kills the tree Wow! Um, takes three to I mean, two two to four years um, probably typically three years um, and that's a lot of damage in three years so what's that just like a, bun a bunch of the of the beetles will bore into the wood and then they they eat it that's what they do and they make the little tracks actually the larvae uh, do that oh uh, the beetle itself you know, it, all it really does is that's the tree. I see. Breed, lay eggs, uh, oh, and okay. the larvae does all that damage. Oh, okay. Huh. Well, I don't know about this. <laughs> and that's no. pretty much reality. Do well in science. No, I don't have any idea. <laughs> I'm more of a C student, you guys. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, these, these. That's a picture from Toledo back in like 2006. Oh, uh, three years later, uh, that's what the street looked like. And that's what it looks like when the trees are gone. Oh, um, and unfortunately, that's coming our way. Oh. So pretty much 20% of residential trees, urban trees, are ash trees. Mm -hmm. um, and I think in Fort Collins, that represents 37% of the crown cover. Oh, my. Um, and actually, in the very back, you can see a school that you had no idea is there. Yeah, <laughs> you can see it now. Perfect. Okay. Um, so, if you recall, back in 2017, we had come to you all to talk about some advanced work that we wanted to do proactively related to anticipating emerald ash borer coming to Larimer County. Um, at that time, we did an inventory of all ash trees within county own county ownership, including right of ways. Uh, county facilities and our parks and open spaces and really they're um, they're all planted trees so they were really focused around some of our campgrounds and picnic areas within parks and open spaces um, there we removed 73 ash trees and replaced uh, those that had a need for shade at Horsetooth Reservoir around Horsetooth Mountain Park Trailhead there's about 10 to 15 trees that remain at Horsetooth Reservoir that will now 
be thinking through if we're going to shadow plant and then remove once they're infested or if we'll treat them. And Dave, do you want to talk a little bit about that, the treatment options people have? Yeah, actually, there are, oh, there's multiple treatment options. Uh, and first, you've got to realize if you don't treat, your tree will die. Um, trees up to 15 inch diameter, and diameter is measured at four and a half feet above ground. Uh, can be treated uh, either ba with a basal spray or a, a soil drench, which is fairly inexpensive and uh, can be done fairly quickly, actually. Uh, trees over that should be uh, done with an injection. Injections, you will have to hire an arborist. Uh, it's an art to do it. Um, and. The basal soil drenches yearly. The injections depends on the product to use, maybe yearly, or can be done every two to three years. And again, depends on the, what the product is. So, so can I ask another question, Dave? And I'm sorry to interrupt you, but uh, so this is not like the pine beetle where young, healthy trees were able to survive the beetle. I mean, there's no if there if if these things get to an ash tree, the tree has zero potential to, to survive that. It's sort of like 1%. Oh, possibly. so essentially, <laughs> yeah, not good odds. Yeah, yeah. And the ash trees we have are, are green ash and white ash. Uh, pretty much in, in the area of the country affected so far, there are four different species. Uh, three of them are like our green ash and white ash. They're just going to okay. be be gone in the so uh, treatment's going to be necessary really yeah the uh, there's okay. a blue ash that actually does okay it's about 50 percent mortality but uh, they don't grow here and John you had a question uh, uh, yes thank you mr. chair in terms of the actual damage that occurs to the tree is it the larva that is uh, damaging the xylem tissue in other words preventing the the water and the nutrients from going to the roots up into the yes uh, could, could you talk a little bit more about how that is that it's blocking or those galleries are creating blockage and therefore water and nutrients can't get up into the tree and ultimately it dies? Yeah, actually that's exactly what it is. Uh, initially the uh, insect will go to the leaves, uh, do some damage up in the leaves. Uh, they, they then will affect um, individual branches. Uh, they will lay eggs up there and they, they will start uh, doing the girdling in the branches uh, so initially you'll start seeing a branch here and a branch over here that will die. Uh, about, the s about the third year they, they go down to the bowl of the tree, the picture we had. And uh, then there's a lot of insects in there, a lot of larvae feeding. And yes, it's underneath the bark in the um, cambium area. And that, that is what causes the death of the tree. It girdles the tree essentially. And the treatment kills the adults or, and or the, the larvae, or what does the treatment do? We're, we're going after the larvae. And you, you can treat up to, probably in this part of the country, up to 40% of your crown showing symptoms. Uh, that part of the crown will be dead, but the rest of the tree you can save. Um, so the, there, there's that option, but you have to have an eye for it. Thank you. So given that cost, and that's a forever treatment, um, our strategy that we employed in 2017 with. I'm sorry, yeah. so you say a forever treatment, so it's a one time, you just have to do it one time? No, you have to continuously, okay, okay, yes. for all time. Annually okay. for the life of the tree. All right. So um, within the county road right away, working with Road and Bridge, um, we inventory mapped and then removed all 305 ash trees that existed within county right away, so that's completed. And then also uh, working with um, the facilities department, both at the ranch, um, other county buildings, Midpoint has a number of ash trees. Uh, we've been working with those staff on a plan of which trees have value to retain, um, which trees we want to shadow plant so that when they are infested, they can be removed and there's other cover, and then trees that uh, will proactively remove sooner. Um, and then we've also been reaching out to the landfill, talking with Stephen Gillette about some what to expect uh, if trees are brought to landfill versus to say a biochar facility is another option. Um, and that'll be 
ongoing that we'll work with him about chipping those trees or trying to reduce that impact of the landfill. Is, it, is there an issue? I don't. I, again, I don't know. I mean, is it, Dave? Is there an issue how we were worried about when pine beetle? We had beetle kill trees. We didn't want people to transport the wood, so they moved the moved the bugs to other locations. Is the same thing with these things or not? It is, okay. uh, but uh, there's a federal quarantine uh, that will probably be lifted soon. Um, they're they just want to focus their money on bio control, and actually the state has a quarantine around Boulder County right now. Uh, and that will be lifted travel ban probably at the end of this year um, and at that point wood, wood could be moved everywhere wood could be coming from out of state mm. but ideally the right thing to do is not to move firewood not to move uh, ever yeah right right okay. and, and Dave can you describe the, the timing of the action we need to take as a county in terms of the trees that remain at, at our various facilities immediate do we have a little bit of time we do have time um, we we just found it in a mile from the Boulder County line it's been down there since uh, what was it 13 maybe uh, so it's taking a little time to spread um, and luckily you know we don't have continuous ash force like they do back east so the time that we have those people down there they need to be concerned. They need to start treating now. North of Boulder, um, I, I do, or Bertha, I, we could not do anything this year. Uh, next year, because of the lifted of the quarantine, that's when we really have to start thinking about treating what trees we want to save. Um, if the quarantine wouldn't have been lifted, I, I think we still could have gone for a number of years. But uh, we have to really start looking not necessarily next year but the year after that on what is going to be done okay uh, so moving forward now that it is confirmed in larimer county uh, we have been working dave's part of a handful of uh, statewide groups that have tracked eab and prepared for it put out a handful of literature like what we passed out to you today we have a pretty robust page on our website that links to the state forest service and um, extension and others that have technical information about best practices related to treatment of EAB. Uh, we've done some don't move firewood campaigns within our own parks and open spaces that will continue. Um, we've uh, historically provided site assessments and we'll continue to do that in an incorporated Larimer County if someone has an ash tree or questions about that. We've talked about uh, providing some uh, meet your forester type tables whether it's here at the courthouse or other places that people can have some face time with Dave and ask about their specific ash tree or situation and uh, we'll continue to monitor what the cities are doing and work with internal departments on our strategy moving forward to remove replace or treat trees are ash trees male and female separate I have one ash tree that has all these little winged seeds on it mm -hmm. and the other one next to it doesn't have any is, right. that, is that what's going on there? Yeah, more than likely. Okay. Hmm. Uh, Megan, have you considered, I think there's still a few weeks left in the uh, Lima County Farmer's Market. Uh, is, there, is this literature or someone knowledgeable uh, at, at the Farmer's Market at the Extension Office to provide information? Oh, that's a great idea. We can check on that. I believe yeah. Allison from, I believe Allison from Extension attends uh, most of the Farmer's Market yeah. here. She does, yeah. Actually, she knows this well. She Not does. Really well, I don't know if she's handing out information, but she's there and she she has answers. Well, it, it would be helpful. I think if we or we don't have information, I think it's something to consider because I think there are at least another three weeks, perhaps, in the uh, in the farmers market. That's a great idea. We'll check on that. Yeah. How much is this going to cost, and how do we pay for it? Well, we've, we've already implemented everything within Road and Bridge. That was in a 2017 budget item. Uh, we already implemented everything on our parks and open spaces. We funded that through our open space sales tax and user fees. Those remaining 10 to 15 trees will be a, a minor replacement cost or um, shadow planting cost. And then the uh, facilities, um, their trees, have, we have time to phase those over time. So uh, that'd be a good question for Ken, but I would assume in their regular budgets are how they're planning for that. 
Thank you. If I, if I may, my last question is in that first slide or that showed the map of the U.S. I, I don't know if, if we could pull that back up, but it seemed like uh, the plain states, the, the, there are no red dots, and then all of a sudden there's that red dot in Colorado. Why is that? Is that because there are no ash tree species in those states? Or how come it seemed to go from Missouri, <laughs> bless you, Missouri, Iowa, et cetera, and all the way over to Colorado? What's up with that? Moving firewood. Yo. Yeah. So that so yeah, actually, at the time that it was identified in Colorado, the furthest west was Kansas City. Mm. Uh, the beetle can fly a mile, maybe two, so it didn't fly across the plains where there are no trees. Yeah, it didn't. Uh, do that. You know, there there are still ash trees out there, but it, but they're so far apart. You know, ranches, you know, thousand acre ranch. Yeah, the trees are only around the house. So actually, it was firewood that more than likely got it to Boulder. Yeah but it was transported there by humans. Just one more example of boulder screwing all the good stuff up in Colorado, so. I guess also to answer your question, John, I think the total number of ash trees on facility properties is only 90. It's not a, a huge number within county ownership. Aren't so. those two big trees on mountain? Aren't they ash trees? We have ash trees out here, yeah? So. Yeah. yeah. You do. Steve always tells me that. I have maps here that show sure. where exactly there. where every oh. ash tree is. They're, they're, they're going to have to Okay. Anything else you want to share with us about the your what you're planning to do? Uh, no, I believe that was it. So uh, okay. thanks for the questions, and yeah. if there are questions moving forward, it's always something, man. Yeah. It's always something. We're glad to have you. Yeah. We we're glad, we appreciate it so much because this is the it's like kind of back to the what we were talking about previously. I mean, this work of county government is the things you never would think about, but it's so important, and so. Yep. Um, thanks a lot, everybody. Thank Good you. Good to see you. Absolutely. All right. Leslie Ellis is here, I think. There I'm she here. is. Hi. Good morning. We're going to talk about our 2019 Wireless Communications Facilities Minor Special Review Process Fees. Yes, sir. Boy, this is really an exciting me meeting. <laughs> the Ash um, Borer Update and the <laughs> Special Review <laughs> Fees. So you'll be glad to know this is not a 10-minute item. I think it'll be very quick. So okay. I'm here to seek your approval for a new fee uh, to implement uh, the wireless regulations that you approved on the 7th of October. Uh, we have several fees that are in place for our administrative process and our special review process. However, we did not have one for the minor special review process that applies to a handful of types of reviews for yes. wireless facilities. So um, in approving this fee, um, we're also uh, saying that this would uh, fit in with our other fees and would be subject to our annual increases that we do uh, based on the consumer price index as we do with our other development review fees. So um, that's basically the gist of my presentation. The fee is uh, $4,200 and that's commensurate with the time and the cost that it takes us to review these types of applications. Happy to answer any questions that you might have. Any questions, colleagues? No, Mr. Chair. All right, Commissioner Johnson, Mr. Motion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move to approve the 2019 fee of $4,200 for the Wireless Communication Facilities Minor Special Review Process. Very good. We have a motion. All those in favor signify with an aye. 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 That motion has passed 3 0. Thank you, Leslie. All right, Joanne, are you here? Okay. I'm here. Welcome. So, one account was omitted um, accidentally during our. Uh, Board of Equalization hearings. That is correct. So, well, so why don't you explain it, Joanne, but, but, uh, uh, and, and introduce yourself. I am Joanne Hertz, and I am with the Clerk and Recorder's Office and at one of the admins for the um, CBOE process. Should convene. Should we hang on before you start? We should probably convene as Board of Equalization, I think, before prior to prior to discussing this. So, John, why don't you make a motion? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I move the count the Board of County Commissioners convene as the Board of Equalization. Very good. Uh, we have a motion. All those in favor, signify with an aye. 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 That motion has passed three zero. Now, Joanne. Okay. Welcome. I am Joanne Hertz. I am with the Clerk and Recorder's Office and an administrator for the uh, CBOE process. And um, there were supposed to be 11 uh, properties heard, and uh, we scheduled 
Ten hearing. Um, ten. And so one of them fell through the cracks. So uh, we decided to go ahead and have this other uh, meeting to uh, get all 11 properties heard. So this is a, um, this was either a, a tax agent or a, or a, a proper, a large property owner. Yes, came in I think the, it was a trust. And they, and they um, appealed, um a number of properties at one time. Exactly. And, and the, re the referee only took action on 10 of the Well, we time. only had 10, 10 packets at the time. I see. Um, and then by the time the 11th came in, it didn't get to the scheduling in time, even though we had the paperwork in time. Okay. So it, sort of, it, it fell through the cracks. So we worked with uh, the trust to try to, to help them out so that we could get this rectified. And what was the recommendation of the referee? There was, uh, there was the no. recommendation was a decrease in the value. Ah, there it is. Uh, so they did adjust it. Okay. Ah. Uh, okay. Oh, acquaintance, Mary, acquaintance Ross. Yeah, that's the uh, Red Feather Lakes, the large holdings in large Red Feather Lakes. So, understandable. All right. Uh, questions, colleagues? No. Commissioner Falls, look for a motion. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I move. I move to approve the recommendation of the Board of Equalization referee for the hearing held on Friday, October 4th, 2019 for account number R0325988. Very good. We have a motion. All those in favor signify with an aye. 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 That motion has passed 3 0. Commissioner Falls. I have another question though oh, before you do go that. Ahead. So was this property included in the. Um, abstract or whatever it was that we adopted that we sent to the state on that special meeting that we had oh that i don't know that would probably be a nancy question is i mean is that important <laughs> sounds to me like it was i mean i think it would work i think it would be an assessor question okay. and so um we get an typically what happens is the assessor's office and the clerk's office uh, coordinate to prepare that documentation for consideration by the board so I don't know what the rules would be for the adjustment in their certification so uh, it would be important to reach out to the assessor's office to find out if they need to take some kind of subsequent action as well okay, okay. We'll and certainly you'll do that I think they'll do they'll that. They'll do that. Someone will do it. Somebody will do okay. that. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. As long as we know somebody will do it. Very good. <laughs> All right. It probably needs to be corrected or addended or something. Sure. If it can be done. I don't if know. If it can be done. Yeah. And I, I mean, I do know that Nancy in the assessor's office has been, you know, communicative for getting this taken care of. So I don't know if there was any other communication okay. regarding this property. But we'll bring it up to Nancy's attention. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right. Commissioner Kvals, for motion to reconvene to support county commissioners. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I move the um, to adjourn as the Board of Equalization and reconvene as the Board of County Commissioners. Very good. We have a motion. All those in favor, signify with an aye. 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 That motion passes 3-0. Thank you a lot. Thank you. Good to see you. Yeah. County manager update. County manager. Well, I did a lot of my usual stuff the, this prior week um, in terms of coordination. Yeah. I spent a little time with the Poudre School District Superintendent. She and I get together from time to time and kind of touch base for coordination purposes. I also did one more of my annual visits to departments. This week I met with the engineering group. Um, you know, once you get those those employees talking, they they had a lot of good ideas to share and it was a pleasure to meet with them. We also had to our monthly department head meeting last week. Some of the things that the county is working on, we you know, like to share out with that leadership group. Uh, the finance team working on updating our, uh, our financial system gave a report and that's becoming more and more real. It sounds like a long time from now that the go live date is January of 2021 but because that that central um, system is so
critical to the work of the county. It it takes a lot of planning. I know we're working on chart of accounts now. I love the um, the title that we've given to some of the staff members who've stepped up as other duties as assigned. We've made them module masters. So they're doing things like accounts payable and accounts receivable and uh, project management, those kinds of things. So uh, thank you to all those staff members working on that. But the most exciting announcement that I have, I just got as an email sitting here today, and um, apparently we are debt free at the county as of today. The, the branch yeah. made their final payment on their certificates of participation today. So uh, we have ranch free, uh, we have debt free day. And apparently the ranch, who's always weeks. creative yeah. about things, yeah. celebrated in a great way. And I've got a very nice picture of a very large cookie surrounded by some tasty donuts. If you'd like for me to put that up on the screen, I'd like you to bring it into the office. For <laughs> yeah, you'd rather, you'd rather inspect it in person. Yeah. Let me see. So this says laptop. I'm not sure that this works anymore. We'll see. The cookie gone. I'll work on this, and if the picture pops remember up, when, like, remember when like your grandparents and stuff would do things like the they'd burn their they'd burn their uh, mortgage and stuff like that. They all do that maybe. I don't think that this works anymore. I don't think that there's a South lap Laptop button anymore. No, no. Anyway. Oh, well. It's a big cookie. It we'll is a very big for. cookie. Right. Oh, my. Ooh, ah. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> <laughs> so, it's a lot to get him excited now. Something to celebrate. Big cookie. I'm drooling now. Okay, anything else? That's it. Very good. Commissioner Activity Reports. Who'd like to be in? I'll go first. Commissioner I only Hall. have one item. Um, Michelle and I and Tim Hand and Tom Gonzalez attended the Legislative Committee meeting at CCI, and both of our items that we wanted on the list got on there. I assume they stayed there. I haven't heard anything else. So our septic tank inspection fees and the uh, concern about community corrections had some good suggestions from other, some of the other commissioners to turn that a little bit more, instead of prohibiting it, maybe find out what the Department of Corrections is trying to achieve and see if we can develop guardrails or a process that would allow something like that to happen with local approval, thinking that might be more apt to be acceptable to the executive branch. So both of those stayed on there. Our other, third issue about using general fund for road and bridge repairs during the time that federal disasters are declared, we have a sponsor for that bill and I think we'll be able to shepherd that through the process. They were really trying to limit the number of bills CCI staff would have to lobby. So I think that one is something we can take care of and should be fairly easy. We wanted to preserve our other two more difficult ones and made sure they stayed on the list. So that's what happened at that meeting. Very good, Commissioner Qualls. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. Just a couple of things. Uh, I spoke to the Fort Collins Senior Advisory Board and a lot of good questions. We talked about transportation, updating the land use code process, yeah, the process with updating the land use code and also the strategic plan. Um, I also, I was at the, um, the Fort Collins Downtown Development Association meeting on Thursday, and interestingly, it was a, it was a cold morning, but we actually, um, it was the annual retreat, which I didn't know we had one, but we got in a bus and, and toured uh, the alleys uh, in, in Old Town, and they actually, if, if we, have, we have plenty of master plans, I don't believe we have an alley master plan, and they were looking at uh, some of the priority alleys and what, you know, what the, um, uh, the projections over the next 13 years, prioritizing which ones uh, to address. And, and even alluding to what was mentioned earlier uh, this morning, I think that one of the values of the Downtown Development Authority is, is being able to invest money to, you know, to help Old Town and to help those small businesses to prosper. And there were numerous examples where uh, just knowing that the alley was going to be updated, and never, I never really thought about alleys in the scheme of things, uh, they did updates on their in their business or their facility. So I, I think there's a good synergy there. Yeah, they're uh, beautiful. The yeah, they've done yeah. This is one over here between Mason and College on the north side. I mean, that's been done for quite a while. I can't, yes. They all have names. Yes. And they've done painting and plantings, and they all painted of that. The utility boxes and yeah. put bike racks in there, and they're much more pedestrian friendly. 
And really it, good, good areas for people to visit. Yeah. And it's made a difference in terms of the activity in Old Town. They do. Well, I'm like Eric Sutherland. Almost, I'm almost done, Mr. <laughs> Chair. I'm, you want the book? What are they saying? <laughs> Give me the statutes. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, John. Yeah, I was trying to figure that out. Uh, <laughs> Uh, also uh, attended the uh, Office on Aging, the, advisory, the Aging Advisory Council meeting, and it's always good to go to those meetings. Uh, finally, on, I guess on Saturday, I did have one of my community conversations up in Laporte, and, and uh, again, maybe 15 people, good discussion, questions came up. And uh, next, um, the, ne the subsequent meetings that I'll be doing in November and early December, we'll have folks from the budget office uh, you know, speaking about the budget process and, and how people can engage. I did attend the Harvest Farm uh, Fall Festival, and that was very interesting. I got to do it with my granddaughter. That was even more interesting. Yeah. Nice. And finally, um, actually went over to the Islamic Center uh, over there on, on, on West, West Lake, and they had a big open house, yeah. so it was good to make a connection there. And interestingly, some of our folks from emergency management were there, Shale, uh, to talk about uh, you know, resiliency and, and trying to engage those folks in some of those important matters of emergency services, emergency management. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, John. And I only have one thing to report, and it's actually an upcoming event okay. this week, and that is um, if you are around Saturday morning, October 19th at 730, you can join me I'm doing my hair then. in Windsor with Mayor Melendez. We will be having a joint citizen meeting at the Starbucks inside the Main Street Safeway. Starbucks inside the Main Street. We move. She moves it every month. She moves it, and so this will be like the third place that I've gone with her to to do the joint meeting. And so we'll be there at 7:30 in the morning. And apparently, their special guest will be their supervisor, the Windsor supervisor of streets. So it looks to be a riveting early morning discussion. <laughs> All right. The board does have um, legal matters. It is an executive session. There's no decision expected. True, county attorney? No decision expected? We've got three attorneys. It's got to be a big deal. Um, so we'll have six different opinions, by the way. All right. Board's going to enter executive session for how, how long do you think they'll take, Bill? 15 minutes? Do you, 15 to 30 minutes? Do you want to have them introduce uh, what, what the item is? Yeah. They what? should give a little information yes. about the item. I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, we were asked to provide some more information to the community regarding a related topic to the executive session, and this seems to be the most appropriate time to do so, if I could yeah. share some information. Okay. So the executive session is related to the landfill, and one of the things that we've recently learned is um, Fort Collins, who is one of our property owner partners for the landfill, has been asked to respond to questions from the Coloradoan regarding some groundwater contamination in their work um, in hiring a consultant to evaluate that. And so we just wanted to make sure that you were aware of that and that the community is aware of that. Um, and as you know, the current landfill is unlined and groundwater contamination has been an issue since the early 80s. And some of the documents that I've been looking at recently would even indicate it was earlier than that. Um, many measures have been taken over the years to address the groundwater contamination. And uh, currently, our property owner partners, they include Loveland, Fort Collins, and Larimer County have been working diligently with two different consultant firms to look at what the best way is to clean up the current um, contamination in the site. The one thing that was interesting that Fort Collins had been asked to answer is whether or not there was any concern about Fort Collins drinking water. And there is not. And at the current uh, landfill site, there is not any relationship to the source of drinking water for Fort Collins or for Loveland. The other thing that I would say is that our team has been very diligent in going out and putting monitoring wells anywhere that there might be a drinking source near the landfill. And those wells have not shown any indication of um, contamination or pollution in there. And what is the agent that the of concern what is the yeah the, um, Steve is here and he can describe all the chemicals the up, Steve. initial um, he's our resident scientist I I yes read, I read an article in he also knows about emerald ash borer if you want to ask him yeah. about that yeah. <laughs> and 
He does. All kinds of crap I have no idea about. <laughs> Steve, why don't you introduce yourself? Okay. I'm Steve Harum. Uh, work for the Solid Waste Department as an environmental specialist. Oh. Um, so the, uh, the main chemicals of concern for many years have been um, chlorinated VOCs or volatile organic compounds. Um, recently, I think it was a little over two years ago, the State Health Department asked us to start looking for a chemical called 1,4-Dioxane. And since we started testing for that, we've found um, kind of low concentrations of it spread throughout the landfill area. And so right now, this 1,4-Dioxane is uh, probably the primary chemical of concern. Was that, was that an insecticide? Yeah, I remember what, hearing where does about it come that from? You know. Actually, there's a number of different sources. Um, it's actually a kind of a byproduct in the manufacture of a lot of cleaning products, everything from laundry detergents to, um, you know, uh, bath soaps, things like that. Um, it's pretty common in those type of products. Mm -hmm. And then also it was used as a stabilizer for some industrial solvents, things like 111 trichloroethane. Um, it was added to that. Um, to stabilize it to increase the shelf life so it's no longer in use but it, or is it still well, it's actually still very prevalent in consumer products okay. um, and uh, I'm not sure about industrially I think it's still in use mm -hmm. okay. and the last thing that we'd like to share is the reason that this is coming up now I mean obviously we've been working on this for some time is that the um, Colorado Department of Health has asked us to prepare a correct what's called the corrective measures report or which would detail how we're going to clean this up um, and they've asked all property owners to do that by November 30th and so Fort Collins has been working on their approach to that Loveland's been working on their approach and we've been working on our approach and collectively we intend to write the response to the state for what we think should be done we'll implement one overall solution though we won't do th that's every, correct we won't do three Yep. Okay. Okay. Any other questions before we enter executive session? Uh, did you make the motion already? Not yet. I don't think you have. Hey, here's the thing. The, if you read the newspapers, you might have heard that there's some issues with other county-owned landfills, and the state has asked them to do some remediation, and those counties have refused, I think. Well, I don't want to put – I mean, I don't want to overstate this, but my, my belief is that they've not been – um, as diligent or cooperative of, as we're of working with the state as possibly they could have been. That's not going to be the case here. The county is going to do everything in our power to clean this up, and we can do that. There's a means for us to do it, and we will do it. I think that's the bottom line. Yes, thank you. There's not There's not going to be any, we're not going to argue with the state about this. We're going to get this done. We're going to make sure our drinking water or our groundwater is clean, and, and it's, it's just a matter of how we get it done. But it's going to happen. So great. that's correct. Yep. Super. All right, Commissioner Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move the Board of County Commissioners go into executive session for the discussion of a draft compliance order on consent for the Larimer County landfill pursuant to CRS 24 6 402, paren 4, paren B, conferences with an attorney for the purpose of receiving legal advice on specific legal questions. Very good. We have a motion. All those in favor signify with an aye. 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 That motion has passed. 3-0. Uh, the board is in executive session for approximately a half hour, at which time we will um, recess directly from executive session. We will not reconvene in open session. So if you're supposed to be here for this, stay. If you're not supposed to be here for this, you got to leave.